Hello, my name is Beck, and welcome to a reading vlog. This is a continuation of the Owls Readathon for the month of April, so I'll leave my part one down below so you can go and check it out, as well as my TBR video that I made as well. As for what I'm currently reading, I have started the audiobook by Libba Bray called Lair of Dreams, and I'm listening to that through my library, and I'm like 20% into it. And that actually doesn't count towards my Owls Readathon, but I did start it at the end of March, and I only read like two and a half books in March, so it was a pretty slow month for me. So I started it in March and didn't really keep up with it, so now I'm reading it in April. So Lair of Dreams doesn't count towards the owls whatsoever, but the books that do count to my owls that I'm currently reading are The Willful Princess and the Piebald Prince, and I started this in my last vlog, and I got halfway through, and this is actually for the astronomy prompt, and I didn't realise that you have to read the majority of the book at night time, so I've read exactly half, and I read mostly during the day. I did read some after seven o'clock at night, but because it's daylight savings it was still light outside so it didn't really feel like it, so I'm going to leave the last half of this for when it's actually dark outside and that's when I'll finish it. So this for now has been parked until it's dark. And then I am reading Sword of Destiny but I've put that on hold as well because I'm reading it in between my other books and because it's a collection of short stories I don't have to speed all the way through it so there's natural breaks in the story. So I've read the first one and I'm also reading The Archive by Victoria Schwab so I started this today, I'm literally like four pages into it so I've barely started this one. One. I actually don't know anything about what the archived is. I know that I like V.E. Schwab's writing and I know she usually has a unique flair on character and setting, but the back of this says, imagine a place where the dead rest on shelves like books. Sounds pretty cool. And I like the narrative style, obviously, that she writes in, and I've enjoyed the first couple of pages, so I'm anticipating that I'll enjoy this as well. I do also have volume eight of Blue Exorcist, and so if I finish all of these books, it means that I have finished my Owl's career for this readathon. So I only have four books to finish for that, and that is what this plus the sort of destiny is. So once I finish those, I can continue on to the rest of my books on my reading pile. I'm starting this vlog around midday. I've already started the archive, like I said. I've already played some Switch and I have already gone for a run, which is why my hair's wet. I've just got out of the shower. So now for the afternoon, I'm gonna have some lunch and then I'm gonna sit down and drink some tea and do some reading and try not to give in to my temptation to play the Switch. <laughs> It is now six o'clock at night and I have not moved from this spot for pretty much the entire afternoon. I was playing Animal Crossing, yes, I was playing Animal Crossing all day after my run and my shower, and I was also listening to Lair of Dreams while I was playing the game, so I got to 61% in that audiobook, so hopefully I finish it tomorrow. But now that it's getting darker outside, I am probably going to read the archived a little bit while the light is still kind of there, because I can't read Hob until it's properly dark. I never actually gave a proper synopsis of what Lair of Dreams is about, so it is the second book in a series, so I'm not going to say where particular characters are at, but there are a few characters from the first book in the second one, and it's a multiple perspective book, so you follow different characters, like different key characters that were from book one, and you see them interact with other characters that we saw as side characters from book one, and then newly introduced characters in this book as well. And people called the Diviners are a little bit more prevalent than they were in the previous book, so we've discovered a few more, and that's who we follow, essentially. So while we follow all of these character-driven plots, there's kind of like the threads of a foundation starting to form for the big bad, and I know that the fourth book in the series is called King of Crows, and it's hinting at crows and stuff in this book now, but also in the first book as well. So it's building up this big bad guy behind the scenes and you don't really know who he is and what his deal is and how things are gonna lead to him, which I like because I can't guess anything. And I like the tone of the different characters that we follow as well because I find that they're all quite individual. And there's also something going on in the background of all of their character plots, which is the sleeping sickness. The sleeping sickness takes place in dreams. These characters think they're making a promise in a dream to some character to dream with them and then all of a sudden they can't wake up ever again. And the few characters that we follow, two of which are dreamwalkers, and so they keep meeting up with each other in dreams and having conversations. So I think because of the fact that the book is called Lair of Dreams, those are going to be the two key characters that have some kind of interaction with this monster or supernatural creature. I'm really liking the intrigue of it. I'm liking that nothing is laid at our feet and there are multiple avenues of story going on at the same time. It's very, very layered. And I am leaning into like a four to four and a half stars because it's not quite the love of a five star book, 
but it's really, really good and I would recommend it to somebody else at this stage. I mean, I'm over halfway, so I think I'm in a safe place to recommend it. And then after that, I have a couple of the Dresden Files books on audio and I did a review for the first book, so I will leave that linked because I'm quite happy with that review. So I am probably going to continue with those audiobooks if I don't find another one randomly at my library. So tonight, instead of continuing Lair of Dreams and playing Animal Crossing, I will probably play Animal Crossing at one point, let's be real, because it's the only thing giving me some kind of escapism and productivity, even though it's in-game, because being stuck at home kind of sucks. It has its pros, but it has cons when you know that you can't go out. So I'm going a little bit cabin feverish, I'm sure a lot of people are as well. But I have the archived, so it is time to crack into this book a little bit more and see if I can get... Mm, should I set a page number? I'm on 10 pages now, which is not great, let's be real. I don't know, I don't even know how long it is. It is 321 pages long, so if I can get, you know, 50 to 100 pages into this, that would be great. It would be decent progress on something. I also do have Blue Exorcist, but I don't anticipate that I'm gonna start that today. I'm just gonna inevitably carry around the Blue Exorcist Volume 8 book until I never end up reading it, I guess. <laughs> It's definitely going to be the last one I prioritise on this TBR unless I somehow strike the mood for reading a manga. It is now 5pm on Tuesday and I have just finished my first book for the Owl's Readathon. I really enjoyed this. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars only because I found one of the particular elements of the plot a little bit fickle, I guess. The fact that there was a little bit of a love triangle when it seemed really unnecessary kind of took away some of the pizzazz of the story, but I liked the world and I liked the characters and I realised I actually haven't explained what this book is about. It's about this girl named Mackenzie and she has moved with her family because her 10 year old brother has recently passed away and her family are effectively trying to start a new life somewhere else so they can start recovering from his death. And while this is all going on, Mackenzie also has learned that there are doorways. So she inherited a key from her dad, which is her grandfather. It took me a while to figure that out because I thought it was her dad. And then it kept saying that her dad had passed away. So her grandfather had passed away, obviously, because he's old. And then she was talking to her mum and dad. So I was really confused, but it's she meant her grandfather, I'm just stupid. <laughs> so her grandfather taught her basically like the tools of the trade and now she uses this key to get into the narrows and into the archive and that is why this is called the archived. And the archived deal with people who have died. So when people die, an echo or a history of them is created. It's like a copy of them and then it gets filed away in the archives. And she deals with histories who have woken up and are roaming the spaces in between the archive and the outer, which is her world. And so the Narrows is the place that these spirits tend to wander and Mackenzie has this piece of archival paper that she receives notes on from the people who work in the archive called the librarians and whenever someone is in the Narrows and needs to be sent back to the archives she gets the writing on that piece of paper and she has to go and send them back through a door. It's all very interesting, it's all very unique, and it definitely deals with grief and death as well, which is what V.E. Schwab tends to do in her books. I've noticed a pattern about mortality and morality in her books, which I like, and that's why I keep going back to her. So yeah, I'm pretty happy that I finished this. I did say yesterday that I was going to read more of the Robin Hobb novella because I wanted to read that when it was dark, and I read two pages and then went to bed. <laughs> and then tonight I don't know what reading I'm going to be doing because I spent today reading this so I'm a little bit read out so maybe I'll listen to the rest of the diviners on audiobook actually I don't know how many more hours I have on that but maybe I'll listen to a few more minutes hours of that and I will play Animal Crossing because I've been hanging out to play Animal Crossing all day I'm very excited my town is looking really super cute so I want to just do some more work to that and that basically is my update for now I think the second day into this week and having finished a book is a pretty good sign and I wanted to finish books for this vlog so it wasn't like my last vlog where I felt a bit unmoored and frustrated I wanted to be less so and it's still definitely happening because I definitely didn't film all day but I got a workout in, I got some reading in, and now I'm gonna play some Switch. So all in all, it's a good day. Hi, it's Thursday now and it's lunchtime. So I am going to break from my editing and go and eat something, but I have not updated in the past couple of days. So I didn't update yesterday because 
I didn't do much reading for starters. I listened to The Lair of Dreams and I played Animal Crossing and I didn't get any other physical reading done. And now I'm at Dave's, so now I have the rest of my reading stack here that I can get stuck into. So that's kind of inspiring me to make a start on at least starting The Blue Exorcist because I've ignored that and I haven't read any more of The Sword of Destiny and that's here now too. So I can read more of the short story now that I've finished another book on this reading pile. But I digress. I was talking about Wednesday. I didn't do much reading then. I went for like a two and a half or three hour walk and I was on the phone to my best friend. And then I played Animal Crossing for the rest of the day and I did a yoga class online that night. So I didn't prioritize reading really that day. But now that I've got one video edited and I'm up to date on editing this vlog, I'm probably gonna do some reading this afternoon. And I was also avoiding updating on the camera because I think it's come from my internalized stress about having to be inside because I've come out with a cold sore and I hate them. They're so ugly and they're so painful and whenever they come up, I don't wanna be on camera. But because I'd started this vlog, I felt obligated to finish it. So I won't be able to film any videos until this is gone except for this vlog, which is quite frustrating, but luckily I had a couple that I have prepared. So I've got the next week or two weeks set. So it's okay. <laughs> the next story in here is up to page 131 and I've already read 83 pages. So I think around 50 to 60 pages is a fairly easy number to smash through. So I'm going to put this on my reading pile for today. Hopefully I get through that. And then I've got Blue Exorcist here as well. And I'm putting this on my reading pile as well because I need to actually start holding myself accountable. And I would be reading the Hob book as well, but as you can see, I'm using natural light to film so it is not dark outside and I can't continue reading it. And that is the only reason because I'm really liking the writing style. The narrative style and Hob's writing style has really thrown me back to reading and discovering her Farsia trilogy, so Assassin's Apprentice and then her whole Elderling series. And I've wanted to reread them for a very long time and I have not dipped back in because I knew that I would feel that way. I want to disregard everything on my TBR. So putting this on my reading pile for the readathon was a good idea because it's short, but a bad idea for my future self because I know that I'm just going to dip into rereading the entire series and I don't have time to do that right now. <laughs> so that is my Thursday so far. I've finished editing a video and I've just exported it and I've updated editing for this vlog and I have a few other things to get to editing as well. So hopefully I can get to some editing and some reading this afternoon before Dave gets home from work and I can also do some Animal Crossing and have lunch. So that's what the rest of my day is going to look like. Let's hope that I actually stick to what I have just said. Hello, it is Easter Saturday and I've done a little bit of reading. I didn't film yesterday, so my bad, but I did some reading on that day. So I'm here to catch up what I've read so far. So I continue reading some of Sword of Destiny and I'm not gonna lie, I'm not loving this as much as The Last Wish, which is why I'm kind of dragging my feet about reading it. I'm now 92 pages in, so I'm not through the second short story yet, but I'm making some progress. The reason I'm not really loving this as much as The Last Wish is because I really wanted Yen, so Yennefer the Sorceress, to appear, and she has now, but the way that she's written is a little bit lackluster to me. I think I like her portrayal as a character in the show because she's very cool and collected in the show, but she's also emotional in the show as well. But in the book, she seems to be more emotional, bordering on hysterical, and it just seems to be a bit of a disconnect. I'm not sure if the writer meant to make her character like that because I don't know if this is linking to the fact that women as characters can be emotional without being hysterical. I don't want to cast dispersions on his character and I don't want to cast dispersions on the way he's portraying a character, but that's the way it's reading at the moment, unfortunately, at least to me in my opinion. So I'm going to continue reading it. I like the world and I like Geralt, but the way it's been done so far is a little underwhelming to me, I suppose. So dragging my feet a little on this one, but I'm planning to finish it overall anyway. And then I also, I actually finished a book and I finished The Blue Exorcist. So Unfortunately, this is also a little bit of a lackluster one to me. I gave this three out of five stars. If you haven't heard of this manga series, it's basically about this boy named Rin and he is brought up by his grandfather and lives with his older brother and he's actually part demon. So I think his father is Satan and he can wield blue fire. And I've just realized I've been holding this upside down the entire time, but he can wield blue fire and he is going to this academy basically to learn how to become a demon slayer and he has to keep the fact that he's half demon secret from all of his classmates. His brother knows because his brother has been tasked to protect him but everyone else doesn't know and I like that premise but unfortunately this fell into really obvious tropes and manga has so many different variations and different genres and it has its own tropes and this really fell into those categories and it didn't really subvert them too much and it didn't do anything different with them either that made them interesting in this context. So I was reading 
reading this to see if I would continue with the series, but given that I'm eight volumes deep and I love the start, but it's kind of petered off for me, then I'm probably not going to continue after this series, which is a huge shame because I love the art style. I think it's incredible, but it just doesn't do it for me as a story and it needs to have that story element in it for me to really latch on. So this is the last volume that I'll be reading of this one. I guess maybe I'll look at the anime, but I don't really want to invest my time in a series that has characters that are really cookie cutter. Three out of five stars, bit unfortunate, and then a little bit unfortunate with this one with the way that I'm responding to stories so far, but I guess this is just an unfortunate reading update. I have listened to more of Lair of Dreams because I've been playing Animal Crossing pretty much non-stop and I've been playing it every day, morning, noon, and night. So I've been listening to Lair of Dreams on and off while I've been playing and I'm now 82% into that audiobook and I have five days left on the loan. I can finish that before the loan expires, I'm sure. With the amount of Animal Crossing I'm playing, I'd be surprised if I don't finish it before the loan ends. And then I've made literally zero progress on Robin Hobb and I feel bad about that. So if I can prioritize reading this tonight instead of playing Animal Crossing, I'm not sure how that's gonna go because reading versus Animal Crossing, Animal Crossing has always won so far. I'm gonna try and read this, but don't hold me to that because I probably will just play Switch. <laughs> so that's it for my update on reading. I am going to spend the day editing a video that Dave and I filmed together. I'm excited to bring that to my channel because we had a lot of fun. So I'm just putting the finishing touches on that. I'm editing this vlog up to this point and then I'm going to do some reading today. Hello, happy Easter. It is now four o'clock on Sunday and miraculously I have a reading update and I finished a couple of things which is nice. I talked about finishing volume eight of Blue Exorcist. I finished that and then I started the Hob book yesterday. Well, I say started but I mean I continued it at night time. So while it was dark I finished this one and I gave it a four out of five stars. I liked the beginning of it more than I liked the end of it but it did become very political and very bloody and backstabby and usually I'm not into politics as much as like a heavy-handed aspect of fantasy but Robin Hobb does it so well because she builds up her characterization really really well and builds up the context really well and I liked seeing this precursor to the Elderlings and the Farseer trilogy and the rest of the books that Robin Hobb has written because in the first book where you follow Fitz which is in Assassin's Apprentice the wit magic is outlawed and it's very frowned upon and if you have it then you're probably going to be hanged by royalty and the magic in that book really revolves around telekinetic communication and ability and so the skill is what the royals are born with so that tends to be more prevalent in the royal bloodline so it is looked up to but whereas the wit is a telepathic magic as well but it communicates with animals and there's usually like a familiar kind of connection with an animal and they call that a wit bond so the reason that it is outlawed is explained in this book with the piebald prince story so I liked seeing that backstory you don't have to read this one in order to understand the Robin Hobb books because obviously I've read all of them now and I only just read this but I enjoyed it regardless. I gave it four out of five stars. I really, really missed Robin Hobb's writing and I need to dive back into her books again because it's been a long time since I've done a reread. So this reminded me of her writing style and I am now very tempted to reread. And then I got 130 pages into this and that means I've read two of the short stories in here. I'm not sure how many short stories are actually in here, but I've read two of them. Goodreads says I'm like 30% through, so a third of the way in, which is decent. And this is probably gonna appear in the rest of my vlogs over April as I read it in and between the rest of my TBR. Hopefully I start the rest of the short stories in here and I don't just leave it because I would like to finish it at the moment it's going to be a three out of five stars for me because I'm experiencing some of the same problems that I had in my previous clip with the character of Yennefer being quite hysterical and unnecessarily emotional. I understand her being emotional for the things that she's gone through but the way it's portrayed is not great and there are also conversations that are between Yennefer and Geralt and a few other characters that just seem unnecessarily cryptic and I thought that would only happen in kind of the first book in regards to world building but it's happening in the second now between two characters and their history and a little bit of it is okay to like sow the seeds of curiosity but it's been a little bit heavy-handed in at least the second short story in here and I'm just finding it a little bit unnecessary as well. Plus there was also a duel between Geralt and some other guy for Yennefer's affections and I just find that very juvenile so mm, this book isn't winning my favours so far even though I like Geralt and I like the world so I think this might just be a downer in the series for me so hopefully when I finish this and continue on with Blood of Elves that I will like it more because I know that this is the second of the two short stories at the start and then after 
after that we go into the full novels following Geralt and I think I'll find those a little bit more interesting. So the jury's out on this series at the moment because I'm wanting to enjoy it and I'm kind of just suspending my disbelief and hoping that I'm gonna like the rest of the series. So we'll see how I go but so far 131 pages in. Not doing too bad because I reached my goal on it to be honest. And then like I said finished Blue Exorcist. Won't be continuing with this one but I did give it three out of five stars as well. It was a decent installment in the series but again it really adhered to those cookie cutter character archetypes and the tropes that really appear in shonen manga which is like an adventure action series that is usually tiered to a male audience like a younger male audience so it's like middle grade leaning into adult but for boys and there's an equivalent for girls which is like the sailor moon and the card captor sakura kind of stories so this was okay but i am only interested in one character and because there's a large ensemble of characters probably not going to see too much of him so that's why i'm putting this series down and then lastly i did finish the archive by victoria schwab and i enjoyed this one a lot i gave it four out of five stars i don't have too much to say about this because i think i summarized it all pretty neatly in a clip previously i like v schwab's writing i like her take on morality and i like how she always touches on the concept of death in her books and while I was reading this it really reminded me of her newer work City of Ghosts which is a middle grade story and this was more young adult because the main character in here is 15. I enjoyed this I gave it four out of five stars I want to continue but I know that Victoria Schwab had some publishing issues with this story and the publisher redesigned these and redistributed them in a bind up so they could hold on to the rights and that's why she hasn't published a third book because she is not on good terms with that publisher because they didn't do very well with her early in her career. So I'm hesitant about putting money into getting the second book. So for now I'm going to park this series but I did really like reading the first book. So if I come across the second book in like a secondhand bookstore or really cheap on ebook or something then I'll consider getting it. But for the moment I'm just going to park this series but I did like the first book so don't let that be an indicator of how I think about the series going forward. I'm just not really happy with the way that the Schwab was treated by her publisher. So that's why I'm parking the series. But if she eventually gets to release a third book, that would be great. And then for Lair of Dreams on audiobook, I got 91% into it. So it is the afternoon on Sunday. I did listen to it a little bit this morning because I played a little bit of Animal Crossing, but not very much. And then we ended up having lunch with Dave's family for Easter. And then after that, we were calling grandparents and family members and my parents. And it just got very busy very quickly. And then we went for a run and we've gotten back and had a shower. And now here I am. So I haven't done much reading today because I plan to do a little bit more this afternoon, but now I need to edit the rest of this vlog. So. I got 91% in, I'm probably going to finish the Lair of Dreams tomorrow, so expect to see it in my new vlog, and I think that's all for now. I do have the rest of my TBR books down here behind me, but I don't know what I feel like reading. I've started reading Scorched Dragons, and I've started reading Maya and the Rising Dark, and I'm about 30 pages into both, but none of them are really calling to me at the moment. So I might just play Animal Crossing, give myself the rest of the night off and I'll start fresh on Monday. But that means I'm almost finished in my wizarding career. So I just need to finish Sword of Destiny. So I'm getting close. But thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know if you're participating in the hours as well. And if you've read any of these books, please tell me in the comments below. I like to know what your ratings are as well. But thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in my next video. Bye.